Dear friends, welcome to another video in the series Learn Finance and Accounts. In this video, we will be talking about working capital finance for international traders. International traders are different from domestic traders. International traders do import and export. So the major cause of difference between international traders and inland traders are the first one is geographical distance. See both the traders are living in different countries. Their geographical distance is huge and they will not be able to contact each other very frequently. The second major reason is different laws. See rules and regulations of both the countries will be different. So one trader will not be able to take any legal action on the other trader in case of any kind of default. So they generally avoid doing trade with each other unless there is a trust element between the two traders and the third major difference is currency difference see when a trader one trader is in USA the other trader is in India so the person who is in USA the trader who is in USA is using dollars and the person who is in India is using Indian rupees so there is a currency difference between the two traders so these three major differences in domestic as well as international trade are a deterrent because of which two traders who are lying in different countries they cannot trade with each other. So working capital finance for international traders we will be talking about this. So working capital is the amount of funds necessary to meet the cost of operating the enterprises. Working capital means the required capital for day-to-day -day operations of the enterprise. So in case there are two traders, a trader is doing import and export and before doing import and export, before doing international trade, that trader has to take IEC, which is known as Importer Exporter Code. This is mandatory. An Importer Exporter Code is required for every kind of exporter or importer to India. No export or import shall be made by any person without obtaining IEC. IEC is, is issued by DGFT. DGFT refers to Director General of Foreign Trade and DGFT is under Ministry of Commerce. So banks and other financial institutions provide working capital finance for international traders which is in the form of pre-shipment finance and post-shipment finance. Now what are these? We are going to discuss these in detail. So we can discuss this in detail by taking an example. There are two traders. One is Rakesh. Rakesh lives in India. And there is another person, John. John lives in USA. Both are traders. John is selling shirts in USA and Rakesh is manufacturing shirts in India. John and Rakesh, they both contact each other. Now John wants to import shirts from India so that he can sell those shirts in USA and his profit can increase. Here Rakesh will become exporter and John will become importer. John sends an order to Rakesh for supplying 10,000 shirts. Rakesh requires money to manufacture shirts because money is required to purchase cloth Money is required to purchase buttons and to pay tailors. So this money is known as short term requirement which is working capital. Now Rakesh requires this money so he goes to his bank with the order received from John to get a loan. The bank agrees to provide the loan or finance and this loan will be called pre-shipment finance. Why pre-shipment finance? Because this money is required by Rakesh before the shipment. What is shipment? Shipment is sending the manufactured goods to the other trader. To the importer, to John who is living in USA. So Rakesh has to send these goods in a ship or through any other means which will be in a consignment. So this finance which the bank is offering to Rakesh will be known as pre-shipment finance. Now pre-shipment finance is also known as packing credit. 
Why packing credit? Because this these funds are required to do the packing. So any kinds of funds which is required before the packing of the goods is known as packing credit. So financial assistance extended to the exporter before the shipment of goods is known as pre-shipment finance and an exporter can avail pre-shipment finance in local currency and sometimes in foreign currency also. Now the question arises why pre-shipment finance is required in foreign currency. See if Rakesh is living in India, so Indian rupees will be sufficient for him. So why does he require foreign currency? Okay, for that, let us take another example. So there are many places in India which are famous for exporting polished diamonds. So what is the raw material for polished diamonds? Raw material for polished diamond is unpolished diamonds. So unpolished diamonds is imported into India from different different African countries. And after polishing, they are exported to European and Australian countries. So in order to import unpolished diamonds, some Indian trader who is indulging in this kind of business will be contacting an exporter who exports unpolished diamonds from Africa. And the currency of African countries is different than that of Indian India. Indian currency we use in India and uh, African countries, for example, South African country is using its own currency. So pre-shipment finance is required for this export for first for importing the unpolished diamonds and doing their polishing here in India. So we need foreign currency. In this case, the trader will require foreign currency. Now Rakesh, let us come back to the example. Rakesh is able to manufacture shirts and exports them to John. So Rakesh has packed the consignment, made the consignment and handed over this consignment to a shipping company. He has already sent the order. Now in the meanwhile, Rakesh needs money for manufacturing another order. Rakesh gets another order. He cannot wait for money from John because money from John will come after say one month and he has to in that one month he has to prepare another order. So he cannot wait for money from John. He requires more money for the second order. Now what does he do? He goes to the bank again and tells the bank that he requires more money. The bank agrees to give more finance. On what basis? On the basis of the documents that were handed over to Rakesh by the shipping company. When, the, when Rakesh had earlier sent the consignment in a ship to John, then he received some documents from the shipping company. Okay, that the shipping company has taken over the consignment. So they had given a receipt to Rakesh that we have taken your consignment and your consignment will go to John. This is very similar to uh, the process, the POD that we get in case of uh, we are sending a courier, we get a POD, proof of delivery that we have given that consignment or courier to, to a shipping company, to a company who is sending our courier to the logistic company. Now the bank agrees to give more finance. On the basis of what? On the basis of those shipping documents. This finance will be known as post-shipment finance. So what is post-shipment finance? It is a kind of loan provided by the financial institution. Here the financial institution uh, was a bank. So to an exporter on the basis of shipping documents. So friends, this was all about pre-shipment and post-shipment finance. We hope that you liked the video. Please press the like button, press the bell icon to subscribe to our channel so that you can get regular updates and know about different topics that we discuss. Share this video with your friends. We'll meet in, a, in another video to discuss another topic. Till then, bye and take care.